Hello everyone. Today we are going to be talking about screaming. This is Bogey, I'm Emily, and this is a very important topic. And I'm assuming that if you've clicked this video and you haven't really been following us, then you probably have a bird that is too loud too often. So for the sake of this video, I'm talking about tantrum screaming. And this is when a bird is incessantly screaming because it wants something or it's trying to communicate something to you. They sound like they're being murdered. Communication lines are getting mixed up. Something's not right. So in this video, we're going to define screaming. We're also gonna talk about why birds scream, as well as provide some amazing, affordable enrichment opportunities for your bird so that they can be more independent. Firstly, I want to make it abundantly clear that all birds have the ability to scream. They are naturally loud, and in the wild, that's how they communicate to one another. It's important to note that you're never ever gonna train a bird out of squawking or being loud. You have a bird, it's gonna be vocal. You cannot get a bird and expect it to not scream, make noise, be loud at times. Bogey's a fairly quiet galah, but once a day, he likes to fly around and squawk. Get Maybe it out, that's bud. every other day. It's kind of dependent upon his mood. The thing about screaming that differs from biting is that biting just affects the person right next to the bird. So I try to pick a bogey up, he bites me, he's communicating to me, hey, I don't want to get picked up. Screaming, however, affects everyone within your household and even your neighbors. It can affect your landlord, it can affect your apartment neighbors. It can really, really cause some big problems for parrot owners. And I've seen this lead to rehoming and all sorts of sad situations. It's definitely something that a responsible parrot owner needs to look into before getting a bird. They need to make sure that their home is an adequate space for a lot of noise. So we understand now that being loud is part of what a bird is and you can't expect a bird to be mute or completely silent. So I have some notes here. Screaming depends on hormones, especially in the springtime, especially if you don't give your bird enough sleep. It's the species of parrot. All parrots have the potential of being very loud, obviously, a Moroccan cockatoo or a macaw have greater reach <laughs> with their beautiful voices. Boredom is a big one. And this can be from a lack of mental or physical stimulation. You know, the typical bird shoved in a cage, left alone, and maybe they haven't been taught how to play with toys and they just want out because then their, their cage seems like a jail cell. I get it. Another reason why a bird is screaming is because of some sort of miscommunication. And that's why we have to put our little investigative hats on and really try to figure out the problem of what's going on with your bird. Screaming can also occur because maybe they've done it in the past and they've gotten a reaction out of it. So Bogey, he does like a flock call to me and it's not that loud, but it can be a little annoying, especially if I'm trying to work from home or if I'm on a call and my husband will respond to him when he does it. And he'll go, Bo, what, what's up, buddy? Or like, Bo, you're okay. And every single time Bogey does his flock call and Scotty responds, I gently say, Scotty, you're reaffirming his little flock call because he's trying to figure out where you are and you're calling back to him. So it's giving him some positive feedback that he wants. So what not to do? I'm sure most of you know this, Screaming back at your bird will not do. Obviously, like doing anything violent to the cage is really bad to try to scare your bird to shut it up. That's not gonna work. It's just going to aggravate the bird more. They pick up on your energy. Shouting or screaming back is definitely a no-no. Even talking back or being in the same room can positively reinforce your bird's behavior. With all that being said, it's very important to leave your bird be when it's having a tantrum or a screaming fit. The next step is basically when you're per putting your bird back in its cage, your bird starts screaming again or doesn't want to go down. It doesn't want to be independent. So basically what's going on is spending time with you is more valuable than being put down or being put in the cage or on its playpen. So as parrot owners, we have to figure out how to make those other spaces fun for your bird. So we wanna make the cage and the perches be as valuable as being with you. Because the reality is, as much time as you spend with your bird, 
You hear all the time on the internet, people say you need to spend four to six hours with this species of bird. Life is life. Life is life. If life is gonna happen and your days aren't gonna be as consistent as you think. <laughs> Pokey. You wanna set your parrots up for success. You wanna set them up so that if, you know, you do have to work longer than you expected or you're having people over, you need to put the bird away. Whatever reason that, that you have less time to spend with your bird, it is important that they enjoy the space that they're in when you have to put them away. I am a big proponent of boundaries. Sorry, there's like dust flying everywhere because he's preening. I'm a huge, huge fan of boundaries when it comes to birds, especially my headstrong bogey. He's so stubborn and if I don't create boundaries, then chaos reigns in my home like last spring and I don't even wanna talk about that. One of the best ways that you can provide enrichment that's pretty obvious is toys in your bird's home. So, yikes, this is Bogey's favorite Planet Pleasures toy. It is a giant giraffe and I just wanted to show you guys this was the old one that we got. It's like this is straight up bamboo. This is hard and see it's this body piece. Bogey destroyed it. He took all the legs off, every piece, like every single piece, took the head off and then even once it was just the cylinder in his cage, he destroyed it. So this is the kind of stuff that you want for your birds. You want them to be so into destroying these toys that they look like this. He still wants to bite it. So the reason why I adore these toys is because they're local to me. They are the most affordable toy I can find. It's free shipping, which is pretty amazing, as well as everything on this toy is naturally dyed and made of natural material. But this stuff is great and it keeps Bo Bogey so busy and happy when he needs to go back into his cage because I have to make money for his bougie lifestyle. So yeah, go check out Planet Pleasures online. They have so many toys. It's like shoe shopping, but it's cheaper and it's for your bird. But the great thing about Planet Pleasures toys is that when your bird has destroyed them, there's all these bits and pieces of bamboo or coconut or oyster. And what I do is I reuse them and I make my own forging toys. And I do that by just basically collecting and hoarding a bunch of food boxes, cereal boxes, um, oatmeal boxes, tea boxes. I really like to collect the food boxes because those are, those are the safest for your bird to destroy. I've heard of some horror stories about Amazon boxes being sprayed with some sort of disinfectant and it's killed some birds. So keep away from those types of boxes. I would recommend anything food related. Scrunchy paper and newspaper. You can use magazine. And I shove a bunch of stuff in those food, those old food boxes and I cut little squares in them and I make forging toys for Bogey and then I rehang them up in his cage and it saves me so much money. So if your bird's not used to playing with toys, you can use target training, you can also hide seeds and nuts within the toy. And then when you start creating your foraging toys, you just want to make it easy at first and then gradually make it harder for your bird. And I like to use a finch food for like an easy foraging toy because it naturally falls out of the toy really easily. And then as you get harder and harder, you level up, you can use less and bigger treats so they don't fall out as easily and the bird really has to go in and search for them. So basically we went over why birds scream, we discussed what to do when your bird screams, which is to let them be until they calm down. Anything you do to react to your bird's screaming can positively reinforce the screaming, which is what we do not want to happen. And then when your bird's quiet, for goodness sake, go take that bird out and positively reinforce he or she being quiet. We also discussed all the fun ways to provide enrichment for your bird. We want the value of the cage to be equal to the value of you or being outside. We really hope this video helps. If you guys have more tips, because I'm sure I forgot something, please put them below. Pokey, can you say I love you? I love you. Good boy, where's your treat? <laughs>